Today I have three problems to solve in my kitchen. Problem one, my refrigerator is always close to empty because of the way I'm eating now and this is wasting energy. Second problem, I have an entire cupboard of unused canning jars and lids. Third problem, I need more cupboard space. Principles two, six, and four are going to solve this for me. My creativity, using what I have right around the house for free, and number four, remembering that every problem is a solution to another problem. As soon as food is cooked, it begins to decay immediately. And that's why in restaurants, they can only leave out food for so many hours. Uh, they, my parents and grandparents were raised during the depression when food was scarce and you kept and saved every little scrap of it. And so I was raised to keep every scrap of food and my mom always had tons of leftovers. She would keep things until they grew mold on them in the refrigerator. And this is the type of food that I grew up eating. I was taught that it was a sin to waste food and that was drummed into the core of my being. Unfortunately, what I thought was an honorable way of eating and not wasting food ended up overloading my, my young childish system with a lot of bacteria that did not belong there. And I was quite frankly sick a great deal of my childhood. Eventually, the childhood illnesses were replaced with depression and anxiety. I lived with those for several decades, and then I met a man from Jamaica who taught me a new way to eat. He talked about the need to eat live food. I didn't even really know what that meant, but uh, it turns out that live food is stuff that's just been picked off the tree or the vine, um, has not been cooked, has not been processed any way, in any way, and he really, really stressed that I should not eat anything after it has been cooked for six hours. So you cook it and it's good for six hours, then after that there's too much bacteria for, you know, for it to be entered into my system and it needs to be composted or thrown away. I really fought him on this because it was so different than the way I was raised. And um, so, but I gave it a shot. And over a period of two years, my health got better and better. My mental state got better and better. And now I believe them. But as a result, I really don't have a lot of stuff in my refrigerator anymore. There's lots of extra space because I'm not keeping leftovers. I was reading an article about the best way to store your staples like potatoes and onions and apples and squash and things. And it recommended not using a refrigerator. Instead, using a root cellar or a cold area of your house that never dropped below freezing. So I did an experiment. I live in an apartment, so I didn't have a basement and I don't have a root cellar. So I tried a closet that is absolutely 100% unheated and uh, my empirical research showed that at least the apples stayed longer, they stayed firmer longer in the closet than they did in the refrigerator. So I created myself a root cellar, so to speak, in my unheated closet. I took out the crisper bins since I no longer needed them and I'm using them now for storage. This created a vacuum, a space 
that needed to be filled. And I started to think. There's a concept called thermal mass, which basically says if you take something that's kind of massive and you either heat it up or cool it down, it's going to stay cool or hot a lot longer than something with less mass. Now, water is a liquid thermal mass. Water has a volumetric heat capacity more than twice that of concrete and more than three times that of bricks. So, if I can take some water and cool it down, it's going to stay cold longer in my refrigerator than a block of concrete or a brick would. So I have decided that I am going to do this. Water. I'm going to put water in this void. Yeah, that's going to work great. That will hold the cold. Okay, so I'm going to need containers. I need containers to put this water in. What do I have? Oh, yes, I have a whole cupboard of unused canning jars. Yes! Oh, yes, my second problem is now becoming the solution. Look, look at all these jars that I have that are unused and they're hogging up the storage space. Oh my gosh, if I can use these jars, I'm gonna free up more storage space and create thermal mass and save electricity. The problem is the solution. Oh my gosh, you can't make this stuff up. This is too cool. Let's fill one up and see how it fits. Height-wise, the quart jars are almost perfect. Look how nicely they fit in here. But the base isn't level because of that drip pan that's molded into the bottom of the refrigerator. I got a problem solve. Hey, I know my creativity is my strongest attribute. Even principle two says this. So all I gotta do is think about this. I'm sure I can, I can level this thing out. I use principle six a lot. I catch, use, and store local free materials. And last week I saw this in my neighbor's garbage. <laughs> I didn't know what I would use it for, but it just seemed too cool to throw into the landfill. So I scarfed it up. Wouldn't you know, it fits in this space absolutely perfectly. I fill up every extra quart jar the whole way to the top with cold, cold tap water. This is a great project to use up some of my older stored previously used lids and some of the older rings that have tarnish and even a little bit of rust on them. Remember, zero waste. Well, the project's successfully completed. We've got about eight gallons in the whole refrigerator stored in the extra mason jars. And uh, we went ahead and we filled the door, the, the bottom two shelves on the door. And we also filled um, the perimeter of the inside of the refrigerator on all three shelves. And we ended up with a free closet. So all three problems have been solved. Go permaculture, yay!